We all leave a piece of ourselves everywhere we go. We may not do it intentionally, but we do. These 12 years of schooling were not about the lessons taught by textbooks, but the lessons we learned in the hallway, football games, lunchtime, and recess. We loved and laughed and shared moments that would be impossible to forget. We will not get these years back. Some days we wish for a rewind button to redo some things in these 12 years, but that's what makes it so real, so incredibly real. Those moments are what makes us who we are now. We will never be in first grade again, where life was innocent and sweet. We don't have the choice between using a crayon or a marker. We don't play four square with our closest friends anymore. We don't walk barefoot to our best friend's house asking if they want to come outside and play. We don't get mad over who got to pass out the cupcakes at school for a classmate's birthday. We don't worry about if it's an A day or a B day. We just sit and wait to go to the next step. The next step in life is all we think or dream about. Let's just stop for a while. Let's stop and recall the things that make us who we are. Let's stop and remember those who guided us when we felt lost. Those who helped us succeed when we thought we could only fail. Remember the moments where we wanted to laugh until we cried. The moments where we felt a carefree cloud over our heads and the world at our feet. The moments where we figured out who we want to be. The moments where we loved with all our hearts. The moment when we realized that this is it. This is the end. Childhood is but a vague memory, and all the time we wanted to wish our lives away is slightly becoming a regret. For a moment, let's pretend it's not over. Let's sit and watch our lives unfold and remember the people and situations that got us here. We all leave a piece of ourselves everywhere we go, and here are a few of those pieces left by the, the class, class of 2012. 2012. It's hurting, 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 it's after the show, after the lights, after the shine, after the hoes, half of them yours, half of them mine, half of the fine, they grill me, but I'm the chef you want, once you get a little taste, I'ma buy the restaurant, sitting at the top, sitting numb, up an echelon, busy watching my life stop, I can get you one, haters are always hanging around like a crucifix, but I've been on the chase, homie, I'm a fugitive, and now the day's got it all figured out, I don't really gotta take so long, I gotta take so long, but I'm missing all the times in the past when I couldn't see your face at all. First grade, Mrs. Martinson's class. I had, I had a, uh, I fell in love. My first grade teacher was Mrs. Hansen. Uh, there's a lot of people in that class. <laughs> well, in first grade, I was in love with Hunter May. Thought he was a cutie. Thought we were gonna get married. I remember Char Trainer was in my first grade class, and she used to always tickle me every single day until I fell out of my seat. It's kind of embarrassing, but at the same time, it's a good memory. A girl named Augusta, who moved away. Moved away a couple years later. And, you know, it was a great year. Greatest year of my life, probably. A first grade teacher was Mrs. Hansen. Uh, Augusta, um, swing set during second recess, probably during the springtime. Kissed me right on the cheek. From like first to fourth grade, I thought I was going to marry Ethan Reniker. <laughs> I really did. Like. It was, we were in love, except for he didn't know. Uh, my best friend in second grade was uh, Nick Brooks. We used to walk around the track every day at recess and talk about life. My best friend in second grade had to have been Austin Schneider. Austin Schneider and I were best friends for a long time. He lived really close to me and uh, I would walk over to his house almost every day. In the second grade, she was swooped away from me by Mark Trapp. My best friends in second grade were Eric Hodges, Morgan Smith, and Nick Brooks. Second grade, it was Haley Parks. We were inseparable. I actually just had a group of people I would hang around with. It was Ronnie Patrick, Dominic Gobo, and Kevin Casey. Now, this kid was my rival for like, for years to come. Just, I hated his guts. Hated everything about him. Second grade. Me and Erdwee Free were best friends. We met on the bus. 
My best friend in second grade was Ronnie Patrick. It was definitely Ronnie. Um, we were, I want to say it was, it was like second grade to seventh or eighth. It was, we had a pretty good run. Um, in second grade, my best friend was Erica Hodges. And then uh, I remember in uh, second grade, we wrote stories and I wrote, my story was called Frosty and Nick. It was about Frosty the Snowman and uh, Nick Brooks' adventure across the world. So in third grade, um, I was taller than my mom and my teacher and basically everybody in the whole class. Cursive. Um, I just remember like wanting to go home and ice my arm. <laughs> I was really awful at it. Like, there's no need for it still. So. Well, for those of you that know what my handwriting is like now, you're not surprised to hear that it was awful. Um, I don't remember learning cursive in third grade because I don't know how to do it now. I hated it. Kids Town was a lot of fun. We did really, really well because we had tattoos and stress balls. Uh, kids Town in fourth grade, I had a store called Easy Mart with E dash Z Mart. And it was uh, in the store, it was me, Dominic Etchu, Jimmy Maher, and Ethan Renneker. I was a, I was a Kids Town hustler. I remember that Kira Van Dersky was in my group and kid, for Kids Town, but that's all I remember about it. I kind of threw up all over Jessica Smith's mom on the fourth grade field trip to Greenfield Village. All over the train, all over her mom. Fifth grade was a really dark time for me. Recess. I remember the recess moms got pretty intense. Um, one day I was playing goalie because I played soccer almost every day and I smashed my face on the goal post and I, I like screamed and I was like crying and it was embarrassing because that was, that was a high pitched scream. Lots of tetherball and course where I got hit in the face once. Yeah, fifth grade was a bad time for me. In fifth grade for recess, I remember our whole class got in trouble, so we had to stand on the wall every day for a week. Recess in fifth grade, I remember um, going behind like all of like the little like play sets and always trying to like catch kind of like fireflies or whatever and just, you know dragonflies and trying to chase them around all the time. I, I remember uh, this, doing the swings and whenever I would go down on the swings I would always try to hit as many wood chips as I could coming down trying to hit people with them. <laughs> so I started, started packing on the pounds. Um, I don't really know why. I wasn't a sad kid. I didn't like dive into the ice cream or anything. It just it just started happening like kind of a hibernation thing. Just started putting on the pounds. It was a very, very heavy set young lad. Um, didn't have any friends. We all played soccer during recess. Fifth grade recess. I don't know much about that. We just played four square and tried not to get on the wall. Recess actually, I think it was in sixth grade. Bullied, that was the issue. I got bullied a lot by the Renickers, De Chavalet, um, Zamira, Weber, no, not really Weber, actually. We used to play Foursquare all the time, and there was a time where Nick Acabellis and uh, Mark Trapp were running to get the ball that was thrown way over in the air. Mark was looking up to get it, Nick ran after him and reached up for the ball and clubbed him in the nose, and to this day, Mark still has a fat, broken nose as a result of it. Sixth grade choir. Sixth grade choir. I remember Mr. Malone. Um, he would get up there and he would do his thing and it would be like he ran four miles because the armpit sweat would just be running down his shirt. In sixth grade, I was in band. I actually wasn't in either choir or band in sixth grade. How'd you do that? I was in special ed. Sixth grade choir with Malone. Uh, I was in alto for the first half of the year, switched into baritone because that's where all the cool kids were. I don't know why I did, I just got bullied more. I don't know why I went into baritone, it was awful. In sixth grade, I was in band, and and I remember I signed up for band because I didn't want to do art. And then they were like, "Oh, but we changed it. You can do choir now." But like, no one told me, and so then I did band anyway, and I didn't really like it. McNett, McNett, gave me the worst titty twisters, like of all time. Uh, 
the dance, I remember the very first dance, and I remember Mr. Harner specifically. He said, guys, I know a lot of you have been waiting this for a long time. Seventh grade camp was fun. Um, it was cold. Uh, archery. That was really cool. That was super bad, but I liked it. My bunk bed was next to Mrs. Fawcett. My favorite memory from 7th grade camp was probably the dance and then yelling at Katie Steffen after it. My favorite memory from 7th grade camp is probably when um, Joe Kaltenfeller overly emphasized the My Little Teapot song just like the whole time when he had to get up and sing it. I really liked canoeing. I thought that was really fun. 7th grade, me and Austin Holka used to go fishing all the time. Well, he would go fishing. I didn't really do much of that. I just kind of sat on the bench, kind of afraid of worms. Boy, I. I do not remember 7th grade camp that much. Um, back in 7th and 8th grade, I dated Eddie Shar. dated Eddie Shar. My first kiss with Austin Rusnow. Sorry, Austin. Um, well, it was outside Mrs. McAndrews' class, or Miss McAndrews' class at that time. It was my first uh, girlfriend. And Jared Helmick was there with us. Yes. And then uh, Jared Helmick was there for our first kiss. I think Jared said something about, dude, why don't you just kiss her already? And I think he asked me if I wanted to, and I was like, sure. And so we did, and I don't even think I looked at him afterwards. I just like ran into the classroom, and I couldn't like think for probably five minutes. And I thought no one saw, but apparently everybody did. Young 50, that was the rapper name back in eighth grade with Tyler Pulak. <laughs> The long hair thing. I probably had some of the most famous hair in our grade. I think it must have been about 14 inches. I remember the the, the girls swoop bangs that covered your entire forehead. Trends in eighth grade. I always remember the girls used to wear like the choker. They would cut like leggings or whatever and wear the chokers around their neck and they thought they were so sweet and like I remember there was always arguments about who started that trend or whatever and like it was always like that girl was like the coolest in the grade because she had the choker on or whatever. Um the chokers were a big thing. Um I would I would go with the like the swoop bang but I have curly hair so it would have just like been really ugly on me so I couldn't pull that off. The trends that I remember from eighth grade were like the swoop bangs and then wearing a bunch of eyeliner. In eighth grade, I was just really awkward. <laughs> just all together, I was just an awkward person. So I don't know who took the S off of Sass. Yes. <laughs> he goes, whoever did it, I would like it back or something. He goes, I've never had a worse grade in my class. I yeah, you guys are so disrespectful. Who took the picture of it? In, in, in eighth grade, I started to get my act together. Uh, Tried out for the basketball team because in seventh and sixth grade I was a try hard out of recess. And Paps put me on B B four. There's only like it goes to, it goes down to B two. He put me on like B four. Um, I remember Mr. Elliot. I got the whole class in trouble because I made my number sixty nine and my name Smexy on the back of the pride shirts. <laughs> <laughs>